Let's get ready to story! The next person, I don't have their bio. It's not in the book. Yeah. Oh. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Make one up. <laughs> Make one up. He was born on top of a mountain in northern Alaska. <laughs> with only a shoe and a piece of bubble gum. Here we are. I'm actually going to read this whole one because you don't have this in your uh, book. It's Bobby Munley. Yeah. Bobby Munley. Lifelong, maybe I'll give this my radios. Lifelong Jessup resident, he has worked in the radiology field for 40 years and currently a naturopathic? That's right. Yes, I got it right. Health consultant, board certified, former Valley View school director. You wrote this very tiny in the corner. Ten, does that say FDR? Yeah. <laughs> oh, for 16 years! School director for 16 years. One of five children. He has a large extended Irish and Italian family. Well, it's northeastern Pennsylvania, of course. He is well versed with Nanny Goat Hill and downtown Jessup. Bob and his wife Gloria are parents, two sons Eddie and Bobby. Come on up, Bobby Munley! Good evening, everybody. I'll tell you what, I'll start off with saying that growing up in Jessup, it was a wonderful experience. I lived around my life, I was born here, and I've been here for 65 years. I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, right on this block here, Church Street in Jessup was, was, a, was a, a famous street. We had, we had so many things going on at this street in town. That, it was unbelievable. We had, we had uh, restaurants, we had two barber shops, we had two pharmacies, we had two teen towns, we had drugs, we had McLaughlin's. My father had a legendary bar right down here called the Shamrock, right across the tracks. We had a movie theater on the top of the hill. So, I mean, you know, all you needed was 50 cents in your pocket. And on a Saturday afternoon, no matter what you did, you know, you go on and have a great time. You could go to McLaughlin's and get an ice cream for 10 cents. You go up drugs at the same price. And now you go to the movie in Favini, who's 18, 18 cents on a Saturday matinee. So how can you go around? I was brought up with a big family. I had uh, three brothers and a sister. And uh, we lived right down here, right across the tracks. My dad had, like I said before, he had a bar called the Shamrock. And, uh, you know, it's great to have a nice family like that. You know, when you're growing up and you have big brothers, especially big brothers, a big sister was fantastic. You know, because there was always somebody taking care of you, like no matter what. I always had somebody that I could lean on. I had my brother Tom, my sister, my brother Jack. My brother Joe was just a little baby at the time. He was around one years old, so he had to lean on all of us. <laughs> but uh, my brother Jackie, I mean, he was probably the most special guy that I, I, I looked up to him. He was just a phenomenal person. Uh, I don't want to brag about it, but number one, the guy had incredible looks. He was probably the most handsome man I ever saw in my life. As a matter of fact, he had eyes that used to compare to Jeffrey Hunter. He played Jesus Christ in the King of Kings, so figure it out. That's how good looking this guy was. But not only that, it wasn't only his physical appearance. What, what he did spiritually was just phenomenal. He was uh, a student in school. He was a varsity football player, a varsity baseball player. He was every man's best friend, and he listened to every man's story. I, he was just, you know, the guy just, there wasn't a day that went by in my life that he did not do something that would impress me in a very positive way. But there were times where, you know, he had rules. He had rules, and his most precious belief was his faith. He had a phenomenal faith in God, which is a good thing. So, you know, growing up, I mean, there were things, being there, like I said, the guy, my brother Jack never said anything foul, never did it. Everything was according to the word of the Lord, and which you know, and not many people did that in those times. And he did everything else. You know, like I said, a great student. He had you know, but his dates and this and that, and uh, hung around with all the guys, and he just enjoyed his life. But uh, I remember one story where I was going to go to a movie, and the movie was right up here in Favini's. It was on a Saturday afternoon, and all my friends called for me. There's four of them. They show up at the house. I hear, "Hello, Bobby." <laughs> And my mom and dad said, you know, your friends are outside. But I didn't immediately go out and I heard it again. Oh, Bobby, nobody knocked on doors. They just yelled for you that way. 
<laughs> so in the meantime, I'm getting ready to go. I said goodbye to my mother and father. I'm walking out the door, and my brother Jackie said to me, Well, Bob, where are you heading? I said, I'm, I, I'm going to the matinee up at, up at the Favini Theater. He said, what are you going to go see? I said, I had some kind of a monster movie. It was uh, The Creature from the Black Lagoon or Frankenstein, <laughs> Frankenstein something, something like that. I forget the exact name. He said, well, did you check the Catholic light to see if it was in the Catholic light? I said, what are you talking about, Jack? I said, no. I said, I didn't check the Catholic light. He said, well, don't you think you should? I said, well, I don't have one. I said, I didn't pick one at church on Sunday. I don't have one. He said, oh, there's one in my bedroom. He said, go in and check it out. I said, all right. So I walked in the bedroom. I'm looking around the room for this Catholic light. I said, where is it at? He said, it's under my prayer book. I said, there's 35 prayer books in here. I said, how am I going to find it? His room looked like the Vatican. Forget about it. So he said, well, let me go and I'll get it for you. He got it and he looked at it. And he said, well, it's not in there. Now, back in those days, if, you know, if a movie was not in the Catholic light, it didn't mean too much. If it was a scary movie, they scratch. I mean, the only two movies I ever saw that made it were a clean bill of health was Pinocchio and Peter Pan. <laughs> so in the meantime, I said, he told me, he said, look, he said, I'm not telling you you can't go. I, he said, but, he said, you make up your own mind. He said, you want to go see the movie, it's fine. He said, all your friends are going. I said, okay. I said, gee, well, now I'm going to go. That's all. It wasn't that easy. So I'm walking down, I get my friends, and walking up the road, and, then I start thinking, eh, you know what? I don't want to disappoint the guy, because I felt that even though he told me I could go, I felt if I did go, I would probably disappoint him because he was he probably would have figured I'd, I just made the wrong decision, so I said it wasn't worth it. Plus, we were planning a family vacation about a week later after that, so I said, at the heck with the movie, I'm not going to go. I'm going to wait for family vacation. My dad was taking us to Lake Manola. We are going to go up there for a week, and that would have been great. So I didn't go to the movie. So then... It comes time for the for the family vacation. We get my dad's car, drive up to the lake. We're going to spend like five days there. We get there on the Saturday. So as soon as we get there, my brother had to get the coordinates of where the church was at. So we go into the general store. You know, we go into a general store. And you got a man. Now, like I said, this is a guy that did everything right. Two hours of prayers a night, every single night of the week. So we walked into the general store, found out where the church was. It was across the lake. It was, it was a nice drive, maybe a mile and a half. So I said, uh, come Sunday morning, my dad came in the room. He couldn't start his car, so we were unable to go to the, to the mass. So he came out and he said, he came up in, in the cottage. He said, I can't get the car started. So he said, you know, you guys could go back and play. You know, we're not going to be able to make mass. So I looked over my brother and I said, oh my God, I was, you know, I thought, hey, that's nice. We, we're going to go down there and be able to go play ball. I looked over my brother and I knew that he didn't like that idea. He was very disgusted about it. So he left, he left the, the uh, cottage and, you know, and uh, I wasn't sure where he went. Me and my brother Tommy and my sisters were there. We, we just went down, we were playing ball. All of a sudden, I look over the lake, I see him coming by in a rowboat. <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, Tom, here comes Jackie on the rowboat. I said, Jack, what are you doing on the rowboat? He said, come on. He said, we're going to go to Mass. He was proud as a peacock. <laughs> I said, Brian, you gotta be kidding me. He said, yeah, hurry up, go and get your Sunday clothes back on. We're gonna go over. I'm gonna roll us over to the church. I said, oh, okay. So we all did, and he did. We, we all went over. Had a nice, you know, sand church with him and everything. That was great. But after that, came home, and you know, we had a little bad luck going on. So uh, shortly after that, then, you know, we, we were in the, uh, you know, we're down to my dad's home, and in our home, in the bar room, and we had a little order of uh, uh, like something burning, like some burnt uh, rubber, so to speak. But it, it just didn't, it just didn't set right. So my dad had it checked out. He called, he called the people in to come and check it out. They went downstairs, they looked all over, they came back, and they said, you know, we can't find anything wrong. It's okay. It's okay. So you know, we didn't think anything of it. So the, the smell sort of subsided. But the following day, or maybe maybe one or two days after that. Uh, we, you know, we went to, we went home that night, and we, I went to bed, and uh, I woke up my brother Tommy at about two o'clock in the morning. I said, because we slept in bunk beds, I said, Tom, I said I smell something burning. He said, I used to go back to bed. He said, Mommy's probably making the baby some milk, heating some milk up, or I'm thinking maybe Jackie's got some candles going, you know. <laughs> but so he said, uh, Well, all right. So we just fell back to sleep. 
And about maybe 10 or 15 minutes after that, I hear some banging on the door, the, you know, the front door. My dad had the bar, and he's banging on the door. Him and Stu Mullen, who Michelle mentioned before, they went out for pancakes. Luckily, they did that. When they got back at 2 o'clock in the morning, they saw smoke and flames coming out of some of the windows. So they knocked the door down in the house, woke everybody up, and by the time they got upstairs to start, to start taking everybody out, there was smoke all over the house you couldn't see. My sister told us to get down on the ground and crawl, and that way she said, you know, the, the, uh, we couldn't see that well. So we all did that. And my brother Jackie said, he's, you know, I heard him say that he's going he's to get the baby out. So we're all outside, and the place was turned into an inferno very shortly. We're all outside, there had to be 100 people out there. Buddy Swift, Woodrow Wilson was out there, Jerry Pickard, sure my Uncle Bill, uh, I mean, everybody was there. There had to be at least 150 people outside watching, you know, watching what was going on. So, we all get outside. By the time my dad got up and Stu Mullins start taking this down one by one, I went down, when I went down, the, the banister was on fire. And uh, I said, oh my God, so you know, this isn't good. So we all got down. Everybody's down, and my brother Jackie, and we're all outside, but my brother Jackie wasn't out of the place yet. I mean, he was going to get Joe. He said that's good. He wasn't out of the place yet, so we're all outside. In the meantime, my mother's looking for everybody. Where's Jackie, and where's the baby? And it just turned out where they were still in the building. And at this time, there were flames coming out of the windows. It was, it was terrible. I mean, you start thinking, oh, my God. So the firemen tried to get in the front door and things like that. They couldn't even get in. And all of a sudden, I hear this lady staying there. They are in the back, and my dad had built a... He built a porch in the back, it was like a deck, but there were no steps, he didn't get steps on the end. So my brother Jackie somehow got across the banister, there was a banister there, but it was 60, well, there were 16 steps to get up to the, uh, to the house, but there were no steps to get down or up from, the, from this patio. So what he had to do, he, had, uh, he had literally had to go side foot with the baby in his arm, holding the lattice with his fingers, and, and he, he, he went all the way over from one side to the next, and then, and then dropped the baby down into Joe. My brother Joe's about one year old, and the fireman got him, and then they got him down, and that was it. So, you know, I mean, that was a very terrible moment for our family. And, you know, with the people in Jessup, thank God, I remember going into Richard Sebastianelli's store, and they gave us clothing and things like that. We were left with nothing. But, you know, that's how the people in Jessup stick together. And, uh, you know, God love my poor brother. My brother passed away in, 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 in uh, 1984. He passed away from a car accident. And I just couldn't get out of my mind that he lived his life so beautifully. And then he, and he, he passed on in, in a tragic way. And, and, you know, the first thing that came to my mind when that happened, uh, I said, you know, it, it's unbelievable that somebody did everything right all his life, but that happens. And, uh, but I know one thing for sure, you know, when he had that accident and, and it took his life, but he was such a beautiful person that there was, that an atomic blast could not uh, injure his soul. And that's all I have to say. Thank you.